Hey, what's going on? Daryl from Victory 4x4, uh, stuck at home like so many of you, but what a great time to do a project on my Tacoma. So I've got um, remote start in this, a GPS tracker, dash cam, all those things that kind of drain the battery with the vehicle off. So every four or five days I needed to uh, either charge this or drive this. So it's not usually a problem, but obviously been sitting here a while. So I figured this was a great time to show you how to do solar on your truck. Really cheap and easy was my goal with this. So I went to Amazon and just ordered a 50 watt flexible panel right here. You can actually do these bigger 80 watts, 100 watts, but the 50 watt was like 24 by 33. So I think it's a really great size to kind of not take up so much of your roof rack. Now, if you want solar for running refrigerators and your stuff off road, um, maybe go with a bigger panel, but I'm just looking to keep my batteries topped off. So even though I have a fridge in this truck, I do have dual battery, so I have tons of capacity, but I think the solar is just gonna add top off like I said for when the truck sits. And also in an emergency, if I had to charge the batteries, I could turn everything off. And if it was my only way, I could just wait for the sun to trickle charge those batteries and be good to go. So those are my two thoughts I'm gonna show you. I'm going to install this. Like I said, this is the 50 watt panel here. So I like the kind of compact size, obviously giving up um, some energy production, but it fits pretty well between two bars on our roof rack here. So what I did was I took the front bar and I pushed it all the way forward. And that seems to fit really well. You could actually zip tie this on, but I'm actually gonna mount it with the T-nut. So I lined, I lined the rails up. And I think I want my connections to point backwards like that for easy wiring. So I just have these extrusion T-nuts here and some bolts and washers. So kind of loosely start everything and slide it where I want. Now, this particular company makes an 80 watt panel that is 11 inches longer or 12 inches longer. So you'd span uh, four rack bars. That's gonna cover your sunroof a little bit if you have one, but obviously 80 watts is gonna make a little more power for you. So you can slide it kind of either way. Uh, I still have my awning mounts to deal with, so I think I'm gonna slide it kind of closer towards my traction boards and then I can screw these down. So the other option you would have besides the flexible panels is you could do a hard panel and those usually come with like aluminum brackets or stainless brackets so you could mount those as well but I really dig how low profile this is so I think I made the right choice with this so now I've just got to get it wired so I'll show you how to do that in a second. So the second part of this whole setup is going to be this solar charge controller here. Now I'll put a link in the description to what I used. Uh, by no means are these the best products out there. They're kind of what I could get on Amazon right now. And I wanted to shoot for under $100. So what I'll end up doing most likely is sourcing some like United States made stuff if I can. A little better quality than this. But for now this kind of gets the point across and uh, it's kind of a test setup for me. So this is just a cheapy solar charge controller. It has the inputs for the panel, positive and negative. It has the output to the battery, positive and negative. And it has an output to a load, like directly to a load, positive and negative. And it's got some USB ports, which is kind of cool. But putting this under the hood, I think I'll probably have to tape off these USB ports, ports with some tape, um, just so, I don't know if this is waterproof so much, but we're gonna put it under here anyways. <laughs> this is my Genesis dual battery setup, like I said before. And this uh, solenoid box here is kind of smart in that if either battery is charging, once it gets above a certain voltage, it will connect the batteries and charge the second one. So I don't have to worry about getting a charge control that can charge a dual battery setup because these are typically isolated with the vehicle off. So I'm just gonna run the battery output on this to my auxiliary battery, which is this one here on the Genesis. And they actually have some great little spots for me to just wire right into that. And then once the auxiliary battery gets fully charged, it will charge the secondary battery, the primary battery, I'm sorry. It'll charge the primary battery, which is the starting battery uh, after that. So I think I'm just kind of, I have these uh, gas hood struts, so I can't put anything in the way there. So I think I'm just going to kind of sneak them, I don't know, maybe on my relay center here. Kind of running out of room here. So I've actually decided to mount it here right on top of my relay and fuse box. And I'll have to put enough extra room in the cables here so I can pull the fuse box off. So 
that'll be a consideration if you do this. And I also, like I said, don't know how waterproof this is. So it might be a better option for you to mount it, you know, under your seat in the cab or behind the seat in the cab. But that requires me running cables through the cab. I really don't want to deal with that right now. So for now, we're just going to install it in this plastic situation here. And if it's a pain in the butt, we'll deal, we'll deal with that part later. I also need some sheet metal screws, which I currently don't have, so I'm going to temporarily use these coarse thread screws, kind of construction screws, which I would never do usually, but, you know, times of crisis. <laughs> so that's there. Uh, so now we need to get the wiring situated. So I think first I am going to wire this to the battery, and then we'll wire from here to the panel. So like I said, these Genesis trays make it really easy to wire accessories to this distribution block. And the distribution blocks are tied to the auxiliary battery. So your starting battery is, you know, used mostly just for starting. And then all your accessories are ran off those distribution blocks, which is really great. And then their isolators work awesome for charging both batteries. And there's another cool feature where if you need, um, like say your starting battery is drained but your accessory battery is still good, you can push that little button right there and it will connect both batteries. So then you have both batteries connected to start the vehicle. So really awesome setup, I like them. And it's so cool that it manages charging too. So all we have to do is connect to one battery and then the smart isolator will handle all the charging. So obviously in an emergency, if you needed to charge a starting battery, if you were stranded, you could just take these two cables that I'm making right here and tie them directly to the starting battery. And uh, you could do that as well. So tons of options. These uh, heat seal connectors work awesome. As do these butane soldering irons, a great thing to throw in your toolkit for emergency repairs and such. All right, so we need a Phillips screwdriver. Where, where are you, Mr. Phillips screwdriver? Hold, please. I'm back. All right, first we will go to, yeah, let's route it through here first. I think I'm gonna throw some loom on these. I'm gonna find some loom real quick. satisfying part so it looks like the batteries here have screwed up the charge controller right there so it's showing me I've got 12 volts on my auxiliary battery and then it's showing me that it is currently powering this um, load port right here so we can plug whatever into that but we're not going to use that section so now what I have to do is I have to run the wires from the solar panel to the charge controller Sorry for the wind noise, um, it's getting windier and I think it's going to rain here pretty soon. So, But I do want to show you how to do these connectors. So these are what are called, I believe, MC4 connectors. I'm not 100% sure on that, but they're what's on most solar panels. So I bought like a 10 pack of these on Amazon and I'll, I'll put the link down below, like I said before. If I screw some up, I'll be okay. And also I wanted to make an extension cable. 
So if I made an extension harness, it just plugged into this and then plugged into the wiring on the rack. I could run this panel on the bed rack or whatever. And then also if I tied two panels together. So as cheap as these are, it just makes sense to get, get a few of them. So here is the, the positive side on the solar panel. So it looks like a female connector. So I'll grab one of these uh, male MC4s, which looks like that. Yep, I'll get one of an end on it so I can show you. So there's this end that screws off. Then there's a weather tight connector there. So we're going to take our power cable, put the screw cap on, put the weather tight portion on like that. Uh, we're going to grab our crimpers. We're going to strip the wire. Now this wire gauge, um, this is going to be a uh, calculation you're going to have to do for how big your panel is and how long your run is. You can figure out the maximum uh, amperage this panel is going to put out by taking the wattage rating of the panel, in this instance it's 50, and dividing it by 12. Technically it's going to charge a little bigger than 12, but 12 will put you on the safe side. So this is going to be, what, 4, 4.5 amps maximum. So we'll say 5 amps, so you want to make sure. Speaking of that, I should have put a fuse on that connector to uh, the battery. I'll actually have to redo that and put a fuse on there. I totally forgot about that. That was dumb of me. Um, anyways, we'll take a male connector here and we will just put it just like that. So the wire is in there and then we will crimp over. Uh, I'm going to show you and do that at the same time, but here, hold it just like that. And we're going to crimp over this connector. Um, a good pair of crimps would be great here. Oh, you know what? I've got a better crimp on my Leatherman. Leatherman to the rescue. Perfect. Okay, so then you're going to take this connector and push it in the back of that. You'll hear it click. At least on mine it clicked. Push your silicone grommet in there. This also holds the sheathing so that the sheathing doesn't pull out of the connector. And then put your back cap on and tighten this all up. And you have your positive there. Uh, do the same thing for your negative. And then we'll go ahead and uh, tie these, you know, top together in some loom, and we'll wire them to that charge controller. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to put a fuse on that charge controller positive, which I should have done already. And then we'll uh, see if we can get any charge in this overcast day. All right, just splicing in the fuse holder that I should have put in, you know, the first time. <laughs> That's okay. At least I remembered. And it is starting to rain, so I don't think I'll get my wires ran today. Alright, new day, new shirt, a little drier today, <laughs> the sun's out, overcast dish, but better than yesterday. So I got the wires ran, I can show you how I did that. So ran the wires down the rack here with zip ties, and then I'll show you how I routed them down the A pillar here. So I just took a little drill bit, drilled a little hole there. Be careful you don't drill into the windshield. Uh, you know, be very careful with the drill bit. And then you can just put a little zip tie there, just like that. And then zip tie this loom right down your windshield on that weather strip. Slip it inside and then run right across the firewall like that. And then tie it in to the controller. So in the specifications of your panel, you're going to see a bunch of numbers, of two of which are open circuit voltage and short circuit current. I hope I have those right. Uh, open circuit voltage is going to be the highest uh, DC volts that you're going to see from your panel. And then short circuit current is going to be the highest amps you're going to see with no load. So we have the panel disconnected here. Uh, this is the positive and negative right from the panel pulled out of the charge controller. We have our multimeter set on uh, amps. 
right now. So we're going to see in this kind of overcast day with the sun peeking out from the clouds a little bit what our amperage is. So awesome. 1.5 in uh, indirect sunlight, which is pretty cool. Kind of an overcast day. So that's plenty to trickle charge uh, the battery like we hoped for. And then on a bright on a bright day, I expect we'll see maybe three, three amps or so total. So working great. So awesome, that's it. A really easy, super cheap solar panel install, less than $100. I kind of wanted to show you how easy it was to mount on our rack. This is in no way like a comprehensive installation about solar. There's lots of great stuff on Google about that. But if you have any questions about what I did here, you know, shoot them in the comments below and uh, we'll talk to you soon.